7 a.m. We got three in the box. Hey, welcome to the fourth episode of Fire Island Catch and Cook. It's been just under two weeks since the release of my last video. I went out on a nice camping trip with the guys, so I took a little hiatus from fishing for a little bit. And so today we're going out for a multi-species trip. However, I want to target bluefish because they're now back in the area. If we get some striped bass, that's great, but I've already done a couple of videos on striped bass. So this time I want to get on the bluefish because they're a fun fight. And also I have an absolutely delicious recipe. So if you're skeptical about eating bluefish, stay tuned to the end of this video so you can see. Another important announcement is I am doing a $100 gift card to Chasing Tails Bait and Tackle located in Oakdale, and that's on the south shore of Long Island. Bill and Frank were, fr uh, were nice enough to partner up with me on this $100 gift card giveaway. So stay tuned to my Instagram, which is Fire Island Catch and Cook, same spelling as the YouTube channel. Today I got my buddy Shane with me out on the boat. Shane's a good, uh, a good fishing buddy, but you're going to see more of Shane when it comes waterfowl season. Shane took down all the barriers of entry for me to get into waterfowl hunting. So we're going to get on the duck and geese once the fall rolls around. A couple of quick notes about the tackle that we're going to use today. If the bluefish are not around, I'm going to be throwing the fishaholic finback shad like I was in other videos. Unless, of course, we get on bunker. I'm not seeing that dense bunker out in the bay like in my last video. I think they kind of broke up a little bit from all the wind. So I'm sure they're probably heading out into the ocean. One really fun way to, to fish for bluefish is top water. I got this plug here. It's a bone colored popper. And it's very fun because it mimics a bunker at the top of the water. The bluefish blow up on this and that's, that's really exciting. And then I got the SP Minnow. I have a couple of different colors. I got Shane rigged up on a bone color. I might throw this silver one. And the reason I like the hard plastics if we're on bluefish is because they have sharp teeth and they'll bite this thing right off. If we do get on bunker, we may switch up to live lighting. We'll see what happens when we get out there. We're gonna head west today. The water temperature is about 53, 54 degrees. It's a sunny day, absolute light wind. So everything's biting in the bay. And if the conditions are well enough, we'll get out into the ocean and see what's going on there. So we'll see everyone out in the fishing spot. I'm gonna throw on some top water. I'm gonna throw on a plug. Shane, getting the bite early. So I'm gonna use the gaff today because we don't have a size limit on these blues. Yep, get on this side. And I wanna to try to gaff the fish just right, in, right behind in front of the gill so I don't ruin the meat. That's good. It's a nice fish. Oh, oh. Oh good no, you got a you got a gator blue baby. Alright. Yep, walk back. Oh. Yep. Got him. Alright, Shane, nice fish. Got the skunk right off the boat. <laughs> Eight pounds. Nice. All right, let's put him on the side. Let's keep fishing. We'll bleed him out in a minute. You on? Yep. Good. Good. These things are yanked. There he is. All right, I'm gonna get this guy. Oh, oh, you got a striper. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. So Shane's got a nice schoolie here. Let's just see what size he is. 
25 inches. We're gonna let this guy go back. And he's off. <laughs> All right, we got our bucket of ice water and we're gonna bleed this guy out so we get the bloodlines out and we could smoke them later. I'm sorry, dude. See. No, it's a blue, so just you're gonna scoop yep. it up with the gas. Yeah. This guy does not want the boat. Oh. Oh no, don't go in there, don't go in there. You might want to get the net for this one. Just inside. What do we got? Oh, I got a striper. All right, grab. Uh, I got. That. I think he's a school. Yeah, he's a schoolie. I'm just gonna grab him in my hand. Don't worry about it. Little schooly guy. See you later. I got black again. Can't here. Oh, I'm on right. That's a nice fish. It's probably a blue fish. You want me to hold the gas to you? No. I think you could just net him. Net his head. I'm gonna land it. It's a nice blue. Oh, man, it's a beautiful. It's a nice blue. Alright, net his head. Got him? Alright. Yeah, bite it. How do you tell them? Right there, it's also an eight pound. Fish on. Oh. Got a fighter here. This feels like a nice fish. Oh, we got another, we got another gator. All right, so I'm gonna step back. He's gone. He's under the boat. Got him? Nope. All right. You got him? Yep. Oh, that like that. <laughs> All right, we got another one in the boat. I, I feel you, man. This is a murder scene. <laughs> Another blue. Another eight pound blue. They all seem to be eight pounds today. Oh, hello, buddy. Uh, 
going to make this as painless as I can. All right, looks like we're going to have to start utilizing the fish box. We got exactly what we came here for. Three really nice eight pound blue fish. Lost a couple fish along the way, got on some schoolies. Overall, it was a great day. We're caught out in a pretty dense fog right now, so we're gonna head back to the dock, and we'll see you at the filet table. Cheers. Got our bluefish here, I got two more down there, and our sharp Dexter knife. Our fillet tactic for the bluefish is going to be exactly the same as we do with striped baths. So if you want a little bit more detail on how I'm gonna fillet this fish, just check my first and third videos, which are the uh, catch and cooks for the striped bass. So I'll get into more detail, but basically I'm gonna cut it in an angle here and then work my way down the spine. So I got fillet number one. I don't know if you can see that the gaff was in the perfect spot right here. Did not go through the meat that we want. Play number two. And as we normally do, I'm gonna do a little bit here, little cut, hole for the thumb. Put my thumb through there and just work my way through the filet. Number six. So a lot of people really don't like eating bluefish and I used to be one of them. I tried all different ways to, to cook them. Sometimes people say deep fry them. They say put them in a sake bath, milk bath overnight, pull that oil out. They're a very kind of dense oily fish. They don't taste particularly good if you throw them on the grill. There's one way that I like to cook the bluefish and that is to smoke them. So. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get right into the kitchen and I'll show you what we're gonna do to brine these for 12 to 24 hours. All right, welcome back to the kitchen. So we are going to be making the maple brown sugar smoked bluefish. And in order to do that, we have to, br we have to brine this fish for 24 hours. Really, it could be 12 to 24 hours. So before we set the brine up, I'm just gonna prep the fish. So I have six fillets here from our three fish, and I'm gonna go through these fish. I'm just gonna feel over every one of them, make sure that there's no bones in there. If there's bones in there, I'm gonna pull them out with the needle nose pliers or my fingers. <clears throat> you can see that these fish do have some bloodline in the top of them that I do wanna remove some of that. And then I'm gonna cut them up into smaller pieces that we can use to put right into that brine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get through these fillets really quick and kind of trim them up. So this bloodline, I'm just gonna kind of cut it out. We did bleed the fish out pretty well. However, there's still always gonna be a bloodline in there. We're gonna get that out. All right, so the majority of our bloodlines are out of the fish. And you could see in this video that this isn't the, that nice white fish that we get in striped bass or weak fish or fluke. It's kind of got a nice blue tint to it. And this fish is very oily. I was saying that earlier while, while I was filleting it. One thing that's really important with bluefish is you get out a lot of that bloodline because the bloodline is also what tastes extra fishy when you're dealing with bluefish or really any fish. Now, the way that we're going to get a lot of this oil and fishy taste out of the bluefish is twofold. 
The first one is going to be the brine that we're going to put it in. And we're going to brine that for 12 to 24 hours. That's going to pull some of the oil out of the fish and then we're going to put it in the smoker slow and low about 200 to 225 degrees. And then that's going to pull out some of the additional oil and fishy taste that's in there. And then we're going to eat it two different ways. So I like eating it just kind of like little fillets, almost like jerky. And I'm going to take some of the thicker fillets and then we're going to make a pate out of that that's cream cheese based and it tastes absolutely delicious with on toasted bread. I'm now going to do the brine. <clears throat> I have a stainless steel bowl here. We're going to, it's very simple to do this. We're going to put three cups of water into the bowl. I'm then going to take three fourths cup of sea salt and just put that right into the water. I'm going to match that equally with three fourths cup brown sugar. Mix that right in there. I'm going to take my favorite maple syrup and I'm just going to use enough to get that flavor in there and I'm going to save some uh, for tomorrow so when we take it out of the brine we could recoat it in maple syrup. Some black pepper. I'm going to use lemon zest and the reason for that is I want to get the lemon flavor in there. However, if you put lemon juice in here, you're going to start cooking. The lemon juice will actually cook the fish a little bit. We don't want to do that. So I'm just going to take this little tiny grater and I'm going. I would just say like do a few different areas on one half of a lemon. And then of course, got to put Old Bay in there. The Old Bay pairs really well with the brown sugar and maple syrup. And Old Bay just tastes good on every fish. So I'm just gonna coat the top of the bowl here. Now it seems like there's a lot of salt in there and a lot of Old Bay and a lot of flavor. But the real reason for the salt is the same reason that we brined every other fish that we've cooked on Fire Island Catch and Cook. And it's to pull that moisture out. So we kind of want a lot of it. I'm just going to take this whisk and I'm gonna whisk everything together for quite a while so it's nice and mixed up. Once that's done, I'm gonna take a big Ziploc bag. All right. I'm gonna give this one last whisk. And then we are just gonna pour this right inside. Move that a little bit. Gonna pour it right inside the bag. Now we're gonna put the bag right into the bowl in case for some reason it opens up. And I'm just gonna kind of move the liquid through the bag and make sure that it's really getting between all the pieces of the blue fish. All right, we have the blue fish in the bowl. The brine is ready to go. I'm gonna throw this in the fridge and then fire up the smoker tomorrow. See you in 24 hours. All right, so it's been about 20 hours since we originally put this bluefish into our brine. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see. The fish has seemed to have changed a little bit of color and it's stiffened up a little bit, which is a good thing. It's all part of the brine and making this fish taste better. So we have to do a little bit of prep before we put anything into the smoker. I'm going to take a wire rack right here and I'm gonna put paper towels all over the top because I wanna dry this, this fish off the best that I can. And I'm just gonna take these fillets and just place them on the paper towel. So I have all my fillets laid out on this wire rack and I'm gonna take another paper towel and just place it over the top and pat down all these fillets because I want them to be relatively dry before they go on the smoker. However, I am going to glaze them with some maple syrup, brown sugar, and Old Bay. Once I patted them down, I'm then gonna take the fish fillets and I'm gonna put them directly onto the wire rack. So now I have all the fillets organized and I have my thicker pieces that are gonna go into the pate and I have my fillets that are on the bottom here. 
I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm probably only gonna let them sit for about an hour or so before we pop them into the smoker. And we have some other prep work to do, so we'll get into that right now. I'm gonna throw these over here. A couple of things that we can prep before we get the fish onto the smoker is going to be our glaze, which is made up of maple syrup, brown sugar, and Old Bay. And the reason for that is that the fish right now is just sitting on the side. Right before it goes in the smoker, I just want to get some of that last minute flavor on there for the duration of the smoke. What I'm going to do is just take a, a stainless steel bowl. I'm going to put the rest of this maple syrup right into that bowl. And I'm just going to put, I don't know, a top coating of Old Bay on that maple syrup. And then our little rubber brush here, we're going to brush that onto the bluefish. So right now I have a nice mix of maple syrup and Old Bay, and then I'm going to dust the top with the brown sugar. So I picked up a, a fresh French baguette this morning. We're gonna eat the pate a couple of different ways. So I have the French baguette, which we're gonna to toast up, and I have some artisan crostinis. They're really good with the cream cheese pate. I got my bread knife, and then I'm just gonna kind of cut this in little circles. So once our bluefish is done and we put the pate together, I'm gonna to throw these French baguette pieces into the oven and toast them up so they're nice and crispy. So that's all the prep we're gonna do for right now. I'm gonna wait another 45 minutes to an hour and then we're gonna glaze these fillets and throw them right into the smoker. So while this fish is resting, I'm gonna go over the smoker a little bit. So I fired this up this morning and it's currently just over 200 degrees. I have a big green egg and I'm gonna talk a little bit about my setup here. If you want more information about green eggs, there's tons of videos on YouTube, but basically I have the convector at the bottom here, which is this ceramic piece. It makes sure that the smoke is offset and not directly on whatever meat we're going to be smoking. Then I have a water pan in there just to kind of regulate the temperature inside the smoker. And then I have the expander, except for I'm only using one grate right now because we're going to be smoking the fish. I don't have anything else on the on the green egg. And that's my setup for how I'm gonna be smoking it here. So I am using premium lump, lump charcoal. I have the, the vent just barely open, barely open here. And uh, that's gonna regulate our temperature at about 200 degrees. We lost a, a little bit here. And I have this wide open because our airflow from the bottom is really what's setting that temperature going through the entire green egg. Right, so our fillets have been sitting out for about an hour now and they are ready to be glazed and thrown right onto the smoker. I'm gonna take another paper towel and I'm just going to take any moisture that kind of came off of these guys while they were sitting there for the hour. So I have my Old Bay maple syrup mixture and I'm just gonna paint these guys with all of that very quickly. All right, that's one side. I'm then gonna take the brown sugar and I'm going to dust everywhere I just coated with maple syrup. And now let's flip all these over and let's paint the other side. I'm gonna take the rest of the brown sugar and I'm going to dust the other side of the fish. One really helpful tool when smoking is the meter block and I am not sponsored by them, but I swear by them. So I have two already pre-programmed for fish these fish are gonna be on for, I don't know, anywhere between two and four hours, pretty much however long they need to cook to get up to about 145 degrees. So I'm gonna take two of these probes, meter probe number one and number two, and I'm going to place them into a thick uh, piece here, which is gonna be part of our pate. And I'm just gonna go right into the middle here. And I wanna make sure that the probe is centered in the thickest part of the fish so that it's not sitting on the rack and it shows an incorrect temperature. The other benefit of the meter is that it will give me an ambient temperature on this ceramic piece here. So it not only gives me the internal temperature of the fish, it also tells me what's going on inside of the big green egg. So I will put these at opposite ends of the big green egg so I can have an understanding of what the climate is like inside of the smoker. And we're on. 
So here's a close up of all of our fish, which fits almost perfectly on top of the big green egg. I have both of my meter probes at opposite side. And as you can see, the meter on probe one and two are good to go. We have an internal fish temperature of 96 and 92. We're shooting for 140 and 142. The reason for that is they're thicker fillets. So when they hit 140, 142, the other ones should be at about 145 and our ambient temperature inside those two locations are 116 and 129. Now that the fillets have been smoking for just over an hour, I'm gonna start prepping everything for the pate. That way when the uh, fish is done smoking, we're just gonna take those thick fillets and just mix them in with the rest of the pate and we're gonna be good to go. So I'm gonna start with the vegetables. We're gonna use half an onion and we're going to fine dice that. So a really cool trick to chop an onion is you're gonna cut it in half with the root side still attached to it. And then I'm gonna chop off just the top there and peel back this skin. And the quickest way to dice an onion is to just cut it through the center right there. And then we're going to make a bunch of different slits in here. And then you're just chopping here. And that creates a nice diced onion. A half a lemon worth of lemon juice and just squeeze it right on top. We're going to take a bunch of chives, about that much, and we're going to mince them. We're building our rainbow here. And then I'm going to take some Italian parsley, we'll cut off a bunch right there. Chop it up, put it right in the bowl, beautiful. And I'm actually gonna cut off a little bit on the side because we're gonna use some for garnish. All right, I'm just gonna toss up all those vegetables. And I'm gonna start putting in our other ingredients. So I have probably about a, a fistful and a half of whipped cream cheese. Um, I used whipped cream cheese because it's soft and it's easy to kind of mix in here. I let it get almost room temperature so it's easy to churn in. And I'm just gonna put that in with the rest of the vegetables here. I have about two tablespoons of brown sugar, a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. I have our Fire Island Catch and Cook hot sauce, which I will not be selling because I do not wanna deal with the FDA, but however, stay tuned to Instagram. I do giveaways all the time where I give away the hot sauce. This is a secret recipe that was given to me from a local restaurant owner before they went out of business and I'm sworn to secrecy on it, but it's absolutely delicious. If you don't have your hands on the Fire Island Catch and Cook hot sauce, you can use any of your favorite hot sauces, and the most common is probably Frank's, so just a few dashes of that hot sauce in there. Of course, because we've been using All Bay the entire time, we're gonna put in some Old Bay. All right, and then I'm gonna take my rubber scraper, and I'm gonna fold all of this in together. All right, so we're all mixed up here. I am going to now put this in the refrigerator because it's very soft from being out. It's actually a beautiful day out here today. It's really warm. So I'm gonna throw this into the fridge until the fish is ready and then we're gonna fold it all in together and it's going to make a beautiful pate. So see you in a bit. All right, so we're at the hour and a half mark. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip over the fillets on the smoker so that they're getting evenly cooked and smoked on both sides. All right, so we're all flipped over. We have probably another hour or two to go. So, and we're gonna go ahead and take all this fish off, put it on our cutting board and start separating what we're using for pate and what we're using for fillets. We got all the fish off the smoker and I've separated it to the thicker fillets, which are on a scale right now, weighing out exactly one pound. So the pate cream cheese mix that I made yields about one pound of fish that's mixed in with there. And then I just have these delicious fillets that you can eat and you can see inside, they're just really just perfectly cooked. I like these ones that are a little bit, have a little bit of char on them. And the flavor is incredible. You can't find bluefish like this. It's so good. So what I'm gonna do is take this pound of fish and I'm going to pull it apart and just, you can see it just kind of crumbles into my hands and mix it right into the pate cream cheese mix. 
And then I'm going to take a wooden spoon and I'm just going to fold all this fish into that cream cheese mix. That just smells incredible. So check it out. That's all mixed in right there. I have the baguettes toasting up right now, but I can't resist to take one of these little crostinis and give it a taste. Mm. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I'm gonna get the baguettes. So we have our crispy baguette and our cream cheese pate. Just gonna put a nice dollop on the side of this plate here. A little parsley on top. Here you are. And now that we have a finished product, I'm gonna bring in my favorite taste tester, my fiance, Felicia. What do we got? We got Christini's and we have toasted baguettes. Now Felicia's garden is still in the works, but that is the Fire Island Catch and Cook official garden that's going to be coming to you this summer. Yeah. All right, cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. You try filet up. Try a piece of this. We're going to continue to stuff our faces, but if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for future content. And stay tuned to Fire Island Catch and Cook on Instagram for the $100 gift card giveaway with Chasing Tails Bait and Tackle. See everybody soon.